Hello everyone. The theme for our worship today is Hope for Revival. And our call to worship, God is the author of revival. We Christians can prepare the atmosphere through our earnest prayer, exemplary living and being contrite and humble. But only God can revive the spirit and revive the heart of a person. The words of Billy Graham. And our first hymn is 405, Great is the Darkness that Covers the Earth. that covers the earth oppression injustice and pain nations are slipping in hopeless despair though many have come in your name watching while sanity dies touched by the madness in With power and love, this glorious gospel proclaim. In every nation, salvation will come to those who believe in your name. Help us bring light to this world that we might speed your return. In that final day When out of the heavens you come Darkness will vanish All sorrow will end And rulers will bow at your throne Our great commission complete Then face to face we shall meet Let us pray. Father God, we live in such an age where people wander aimlessly to find something to give them meaning and life. What they seek they do not find, because they are not finding it in the true source of life itself, you. Father, today we come together as true and sincere followers of you to kindly and ardently ask for a revival of souls in this age. Father, you say in Matthew 7 to come and ask you, as our Father, for what we desire. Lord, we desire for our friends, families and neighbours to be open and to seek and find the truth of the authentic source of life, you. We invite your Holy Spirit to pour out the truth on the people, you have created. We ask you to perform miracles, wonders and to speak to them. Father, we pray that truth will be brought to light in each and every person you have created. 
It is only by your spirit that truth can be surely known. And so we implore this day for such a revival of spirits, of nations and of hearts. In the name of our Saviour Jesus we pray. Amen. We now say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is 2 Chronicles 30, verses 18 to 27. Although most of the many people who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun had not purified themselves, yet they at the post-Passover, contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the Lord, who is good, pardon everyone who sets their heart on seeking God, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even if they are not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary. And the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. The Israelites, who were present in Jerusalem, celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days with great rejoicing while the Levites and priests praised the Lord every day with resounding instruments dedicated to the Lord. Hezekiah spoke encouragingly to all the Levites, who showed good understanding of the service of the Lord. For the seven days they ate their assigned portion and offered fellowship offerings and praised the Lord, the God of their ancestors. The whole assembly then agreed to celebrate the festival seven more days, so, for another seven days, they celebrated joyfully. Hezekiah, king of Judah, provided a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep and goats for the assembly. And the officials provided them with a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep and goats. A great number of priests consecrated themselves. The entire assembly of Judah rejoiced along with the priests and Levites and all who had assembled from Israel, including the foreigners who had come from Israel and also those who resided in Judah. There was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the days of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. The priests and the Levites stood to bless the people, and God heard them, for their prayer reached heaven, his holy dwelling place. Amen. This reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 38 to 47. Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about three thousand were added to their number that day. The Fellowship of the Believers They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God 
and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A young woman called Callie Logan writes, Throughout the ages, there have been seasons of drought spiritually in the world. During such seasons, there rises a true aching and longing for the only true living water that will quench the thirst of nations. This living water comes only through and by the living Holy Spirit of God, poured out lovingly by grace. As followers of Christ Jesus, it is vital to pray for this pouring out of spirit through revival, inviting God to revive the nations as he has done before. I remember when Reverend Katie Jackson was with us in the circuit. She talked a great deal about revival. When I had moments of doubt and we struggled with keeping Patrington Chapel alive, she would encourage me to keep looking to the day when revival would finally come to Patrington. She couldn't say when, but as we all know, God works in his own time, not ours. What you may wonder set me off on this train of thought for the service today. How often do I read one of the little homilies in my daily bread booklet and find myself reading everything I can find on any given subject? Sunday the 19th of February, the title was Revival Comes. The scripture was 2 Chronicles 7 verses 11 to 16. Verse 14 says, If my people who were called by my name will humble, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The story was all about Arukan, a small town in northern Australia. Of course, my interest was caught up immediately, though our visits have been at the other side of that large continent. It's still Australia, and we've been there. Many commentators say that Australia has never been visited by a gen genuine religious revival, as in other countries. But that's not entirely true. The effect of the Great Awakening of 1858-59 was also felt in Australia, fostered mainly by the Methodist Church. Records show that the Methodist Church grew by a staggering 72% between 1857 and 1864, while the Baptists, Anglicans, Presbyterians and other Evangelicals also benefited. Evangelical fervour was at its height during the 1920s, with visiting evangelists R.A. Torrey, Wilbur J. Chapman, Charles M. Alexander and others winning many convicts converts in their crusades. The crusades of American evangelist Billy Graham in the 1950s had significant impact on Australian churches. But the events in Arukun were remarkable. The total number of inhabitants was around 1,300. The gospel had arrived in the isolated little town a century before, but eye for an eye retribution sometimes remained between the seven clans of the Aboriginal population. In 2015, clan tensions grew, and when a murder happened, payback required someone from the offender's family to die in return. Re Revival meets people at their base needs, and for Arukan, what was needed was a lot of reconciliation. Craig Mishewski, a minister in a nearby town, said, Under the old traditional law, there would have been payback, but the two families involved reconciled instead, which was a completely unique thing. There were scenes of joy and hopes for the people. That is what revival looked like in Aruku. At the beginning of 2016, there were 70 baptisms. From there, it just kept growing, and more and more people started attending church. It was slow at first, but then the floodgates opened. The church is not big, but there were suddenly over a thousand people coming in every Sunday. There were fellowship meetings every night of the week. It was a spontaneous response to the move of God. Craig said, we've got to remember that there was a hundred years of prayer and faithful dedication to God before this. A group of elders in that church prayed continuously to have fellowship and witnessed their faith consistently for a very long time. There was a history there. As the people of Arukan found, revival brings joy and reconciliation to a town. How much do our cities, towns and villages need such transformation? If we think about our own circuit, how many chapels have closed in recent times? Since Martin and I moved here, Otteringham Chapel has closed, Easington, recently Cainham and Thorngambald. Shrinking populations have played their part, but we must acknowledge that the younger generation have mostly turned away from God. You could say that uh, you could say that other gods and idols have drawn them away, but certainly the changes in society have meant that Sunday is no longer a day of rest, but filled with everything that can't be done in the working week. The me generation don't think that they need God. He doesn't have a Facebook page anyway. I am reminded of Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. 
But as Craig Mishewski reminds us, we've got to remember that there was a hundred years of prayer and faithful dedication to God before this. I can remember when Reverend Katie was with us and we decided to have prayer meetings. Our intentions were good. We wanted revival. We wanted our church to have purpose again, to welcome in those needing God's peace and healing. We prayed and prayed, but eventually it petered out. We felt we had failed, but then I am reminded of Acts 1 verses 6 to 7. Jesus is with his disciples after his resurrection. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. God has his own timetable. We, like the disciples, run our lives by human times. It's all we know. We had to wait. It was difficult, though, when the congregation is dwindling and the money becomes a big issue and there doesn't seem to be any hope on the horizon. We were waiting for Deacon Denise and her immense enthusiasm for us to survive. Then, on a rainy, miserable day in November, a couple who'd just moved to Patrington Haven heard laughter coming out of the schoolroom door. They saw the poster in the window advertising our Christmas coffee morning, and they came in. Lots of little, simple events had led them to our door. Or perhaps God was moving now. With this injection of new blood and new leadership, we began the huge task of modernising the schoolroom and giving the upstairs of the chapel a jolly good clear out. We were all working together, despite our small number. The atmosphere changed. Sadly, Terry and Jan Brewis had to return to West Yorkshire because his mum needing ca needed caring for. Deacon Denise retired. Would we keep going? We did. Suddenly we had new people coming through the doors. Not many, but enough to replace those we had lost. One or two members who hadn't been for quite some time returned. We were holding on. The financial situation seemed to ease a little, and with renewed enthusiasm, we began fundraising with a purpose. A couple of legacies made a difference too. There's a renewed sense of keeping going in our chapel. We keep making new friends and slowly enjoying a renewed happy atmosphere that seemed to have been lost before. But we need to persist in praying. We hope to join the planned circuit prayer meetings. On the Crosswalks website, Andrew Murray says, The coming revival must begin with a great prayer revival. It is in the closet with the door shut that the sound of abundant revival will be first heard. An increase in the secret prayer of ministers and members will be the sure herald of blessings. Act 2, Acts 2, verse 39 says, The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. Amen.
because we've united four different bands from Dalmellington, Kirkintillox, Newton Grange and West Lothian schools and brought them together to celebrate the centenary of the Scottish Amateur Brass Band Association. As we close our service, we pray. Father God, thank you for hearing us when we pray. Thank you that we can come to you with our every concern, big and small. Lord, we come to you today to ask that you pour your spirit out on the circuit and its people. May we feel you move within our hearts. May we hear your voice. We ask that you help us to have ears that hear and hearts that are willing to follow. Father God, we ask this in your name. Amen. 